one is a gaming brand. There's been hundreds and hundreds of games. I think there's been 115 Formula One games to date. Um, but sales-wise, they've never quite achieved what you perhaps expect from a sport that's as massive as it is across the world. So we've gone back and totally redesigned the way that we're trying to think about Formula One games. And our mantra is now be the driver, live the life. So be the driver is everything you'd expect from a racing game, never mind a Formula One game. Um, but we've in added intricacies to Formula One like practice and qualifying. So it's all the official cars, all the official drivers, all the official tracks absolutely authentic. But then we have this live a life um, a section as well which is the lifestyle angle of F1. These drivers earn millions and millions of pounds. They have girls, they have press attention, they have glamour. So we're kind of lifting up the velvet rope and letting you go into the actual paddock. So adding that kind of lifestyle element that you've seen in other games and just bringing in kind of an, an RPG light element to it but at the same time making the racing the real focus. When you first boot the game, you'll be taken into a press conference. So ask you basic information like your name, where you're from, um, but also what kind of experience you're expecting. Are you after this real hardcore simulation experience I just talked about? Or are you perhaps new to Formula One games? You don't know what an anti-roll bar does or what a gear ratio is. You just want to have kind of your hand held early on so that you get to know the tracks, you get to know what it's about, what kind of length of career you're after so you can have a three, five or seven year career. Then you can start dialing in like the the more simulation experience. Grid and Dirt 2 and Dirt have very different handling models to Formula 1. Formula 1 cars are completely unique, um, even to something like IndyCar, um, because IndyCar is obviously oval racing predominantly, um, whereas F1 is always circuit racing. Um, so the introduction of aerodynamics is massive. Uh, the the speeds that these cars can take corners at is unbelievable when the aero is working properly. So we've been working with a guy called Anthony Davidson who raced in Formula 1 for a number of years for BAR and Super Aguri so that we're getting as authentic a Formula 1 experience as we can get for the real hardcore simulation guys that they can get as near to Formula 1 as actually sitting in one of these cars but at the same time making it playable so that it's not just 30 people in the world who can play it and then it's about then making that level of accessibility so that we can then don't tone that down if you want a, a slight less simulation experience. Weather is um, a massively important thing for Formula One. Obviously anyone that watches the races will know that rain can just wreck a whole weekend's worth of strategy and planning and so getting weather right was massively important for us. We have active track technology which um, tells the game how wet or how dry or how much grip, how many marbles, what dust levels there are on the circuit for every square 30 centimetres. It actually knows that the racing line section of the circuit will be much grippier than the, pit, the bit with a massive puddle where there's a strange camber or a dip in the, in the track. And another good thing is that um, with the weather system that we're able to then feed it back into the Ego engine. So now on our future racing games, say for example Dirt 3, we'll be able to feature fully dynamic weather. Obviously press is really important to in any sport and probably in, in most businesses, so you've got to have this kind of public profile. There's two different kinds of press in the game, there's the impromptu press conference, you've not qualified very well, you get a microphone shoved under your nose after you've just finished qualifying and they want to know why you've not done very well or why you've done really well. Do I blame myself, admit it was my fault, I messed up? Or do I say the car's just not good enough this weekend or so and so blocked me off at this corner? And those decisions would then affect the way that the team and other drivers see you. We also have those um, more formal press conferences, so if you finish in the top three for qualifying or for actual race day, then you'll be sat down um, like you see on the, on the television on a Sunday with the, the guys who have finished on the podium with you being asked more formal questions, which will always be pretty positive because you've finished in the top three, so it's good news all around. Okay, so F1 2010 is out in September on PS3, Xbox 360 and PC. Um, we've really enjoyed working on it, it's been a tremendous experience and we hope you enjoy playing it.